Hello, Milwaukee. This is Pastor Walter Owens, along with my co-host, the one and only Pastor Charles Emery. And we want to welcome you this week to our weekly broadcast, Focus 2020. Pastor, we have a powerful word for our listeners today. You know, it's kind of kind of sad and a little gloomy outside. No, it isn't. It's sunny and bright. I don't have my sunglasses and my bathing suit on, and I can't get on a cruise ship out here in the snow, so <laughs> it's gloomy to me. Yeah, what you talking about? I understand. Okay, now. okay. Now you now I get the revelation. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you step out there in this snow that we got here, and yeah. man, 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 man. How you been doing? I'm doing great. Praise How God, about yourself? Praise. I'm hanging in there, Pastor. I'm hanging in there. Why are you hanging? The Bible says stay Well, you got I guess that's a good point. I got to stay <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, so you studied my book on how, how to get me back. Is that what you Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. Okay, I'm standing on a milk crate that is full is fully fully dead. That don't sound right to it. That don't sound right. Well, let's go let's go to work. <laughs> yes, Pastor, hey, you say you're doing good. Yeah. Hey, amen. Amen. Hey, amen. you know, um I was talking with you uh early in our meeting and uh, you uh Gave me an encouragement to read uh, Sister Dotson's book. That's the book that we've been uh, uh, using all this month. Uh, yes. It's titled More of You, God by Sister Jackie Dotson. It's a two year affirming devotional journey. And this book has really been a, a tool that we can use this month. And you know, I think it's just, we've got another week left. No, this is our last week. This is the last week. Oh, wow. So, Sister Dotson, we just want to thank you for allowing us to use your book to help our listeners to understand more of you, God. Amen. Uh, if you can, Pastor, can you read something from me? Let's go to, let's see, let me pick out January the 28th. Okay. Uh, January 28th. Yes, sir. It says, God, you are in my ear. Can you hear me? Thus says the Lord, Lord, today I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. You're calling me to do your work. I'm listening closely to get to the intricate details for my assignment. Father, rain down on me with your holy fire. Fill me up, Lord, so I will overflow with the love you have imparted in me. Mm. Jesus, you say you will make room for my gifts. Lord, open my eyes so I can see the gifts which you have bestowed upon me. Lord, let, let me work on perfecting what you have given me for the use of your kingdom. Father, I am working for the kingdom. There is nothing more I would rather do than work for you, telling this dying world of a living Savior. Lord, I will go in boldness without fear. I will do what you have called me to do. I love you, Lord. Now, Lord, empower me with more of you, God. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. I love that, Pastor. You know, because that shows me something over in the... Uh, there was a scripture, Isaiah 65 and 24. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 65 and 24. And uh, uh, when, when you, let, let me just, let's just look at something right quick. Because I love that part where uh, when you was reading, uh, you, you, you made a statement that you will make room for my gifts, Lord. Open my eyes so I can see the gifts in which you have bestowed upon me. Lord, yes. let me work on perfecting what you have given me to use of your kingdom. Father, I am working for your kingdom. But I like when you read this part, uh, Pastor, when you said there is nothing more I would rather do than work for you. Yes. Tell me this dying world of a living Christ, Lord, I will go in boldness without fear. You know, uh, I saw something. I, I wanted to read that, Pastor, because that's what we should be doing, and that's what I showed. And that's the yes. title that I love about our show, Focus 2020. Yes. You know, and Amen. looking at this here, it, it, it takes me to Isaiah 65 and 24. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. That's amazing. You know, you know, I, I really like that, Pastor, because uh, you gave me a title. 
And you said, well, Pastor, you know, I, I read more of you, God. I read what you showed me in Isaiah 65 and 24. Then I, when I came to you, and I said, well, okay, then, Pastor, you done me. What would you title the message today? And I gave you the answer, why are you allowing the enemy to hinder you with fear? Why? Why? Yeah, why? That's something to think about. You know, because fear, you know, is, is defined in different ways. Uh, I remember one evangelist uh, defined fear as false evidence appearing real. Uh -huh. But as I was studying and meditating on God's word, God spoke to me and said, fear is defined as failure, evil, arrest, and restraints. Oh my God. Say that again. Fear is defined as failure, uh -huh. evil, uh -huh. which is evil imagination, uh -huh. uh, arrest, and restraints. Explain that. Do tell. Okay. First of all, failure, we have a defeated mindset when things are not going the way we expect them to go, so we already deem ourselves as a failure. Okay. So we don't okay. trust in God's word, we trust in our own ability, and we neglect God's word, and we you get into a place or a state of misery, mm -hmm. which then brings forth an evil imagination, because now we're plotting and planning for someone else's demise, because things are not working out for me, so I don't want to work out for you. Okay, I, I, I like that. I yeah. like that. <clears throat> and then um, arrest, which is uh, captivity. The enemy, what, what he would do is bring you to a place of captivity in your mind before he actually brings you to captivity in the natural. And, and what I mean by that is when we're not walking according to God's will, we walk according to what the enemy wants us to do. So we follow his leadership and not the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. So in other words, the Bible mentioned two significant types of fear. Yes. The first type is beneficial and is to be encouraged. The right. second type is, uh, what is that? Uh, um, detriment. Uh, okay, I'm looking at my notes wrong. Detriment yep. and it's to overcome. Be overcome. Come. Now, okay, come on now. So when you think about the restraint part, you know, fear, you know, the enemy, what he does, when he restrains you, he hinders. That's what God gave it to me. He said the hindering power of the enemy is to prevent you from seeing the benefit and the encouragement that comes from God's word when you're dependent on God. So the second type of fear is detriment and to be overcome. And what it means by detriment, because it can destroy you. Okay. It can okay. paralyze you. Okay. You know, so when you get into that type of mindset, positive fear is a natural sort of protection that will keep us from hurting ourselves. Why? Because we're leaning and dependently resting on God. So it sounds like you 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 share with our listeners today that's two types of fear. Yes. A positive and a negative. And a negative. Right. Okay. You know, like in the equations uh, of mathematics, this is a negative and negative and negative. A negative and a positive is a negative. <laughs> so the negative outweighs the positive if you give it more power. Okay. okay. And that's what God okay. says, you know, about us. If we give the enemy the power over us, he, he would produce nothing but negativity through the lifespan of your life. So that's why you asked us again, why are we allowing the enemy to hinder yeah. and keep us in fear? And then on top of that, negative fear is faith of the devil. You got to break that down. You got to go. Negative on. fear. Think about faith. Faith, according to the word in, in um, Hebrews 11 and 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the things not seen, right? Mm -hmm. So, that type of faith is a God kind of faith, which depends totally upon God to manifest what I can't see with the natural eye, what I'm believing God to do in the spiritual realm for me. So, the enemy has the same ability when I give him the faith that I have that's supposed to be for God. I put it towards the negative stuff in my life, so I get the results of whatever I'm trusting the enemy to do in my life. Mm, that's good, Pastor, because that again, that's that F E A I that you was breaking yeah. down uh, for us. Yeah. Because in my notes, I said fear of the Lord brings with it many blessings and benefits. Yeah, it is the beginning of wisdom, and it'll lead us to good understanding. Psalms one eleven ten. Only fools despise wisdom and discipline. Now, it says that, that only a fool that despise wisdom and discipline. Yes. So if we're not focused on Christ and allowing our enemy, and I'm going to say our enemy because we're the one that uh, invites him, invite him in. Yes, absolutely. And like uh, like uh, one of your favorite words is, is allow him to enter our ear gate. And once, we allow him, yeah, and once we allow that to happen, then we 
somehow make camp there. Yes. You know, to be honest, I caught myself in the last week here, some things that I, uh, a person I needed to take care of, and the enemy, he would continuously bother me, and I'm like, why does this keep happening? Because he harasses you. He harasses oh, you. Oh, okay. And okay. the reason why he harasses you, because he don't want you to have faith in God. Okay. He okay. wants you to look at your situation, the problems that's going on in your life, your circumstances, dealing with your issue, medical issues and things that you've been going through, the enemy wants you to focus on that than focus on God. If I can change your focus from seeing the work that God is doing in your life, I can distract you. And then everything else begins to magnify itself. The Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. So if I'm magnifying God, I'm making him bigger than the problems and circumstances in my life. And the enemy does the opposite. He make his stuff bigger than what God wants you to see. So in other words, we should understand that our God is bigger than any problem. Absolutely. Hey, let's go over here. Let me do something. I like that, Pastor. I like that. I really love that. Because, uh, let me see here. Uh, you, you were sharing with us about, uh, when, I, when I read the first type, it's beneficial and it's to be encouraged. Beneficial. Uh, yes. When I'm dealing with fear, what, what would I benefit out of that? Well, when you deal with the fear of the Lord, the benefit is God giving you peace of mind. He's supplying you every need. Okay. He's giving you comfort. Okay, okay, you know, okay. Strength and weakness. Okay. So it takes me to the book of Psalms. Go with me, Pastor. Psalms 34. Okay. I'm going to start at the first verse. It says, I will bless the Lord all time. This praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. That's powerful. You know, that's powerful. You know, there. You know uh, 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 so in other words, I, I, I'm, if I'm hearing you correctly, you share with us, Pastor, is that when we are dealing with a situation, when trials and tribulations come up against us, is that we should cry out to the Lord. And if we cry to him with a clean, pure heart, that's then it. he will hear us. That's it. See, that's the key is we have to go, what uh, when I say, how can I say this? When we in prayer, when we are praying to the Lord, we got to go with him with a, a pure, humble heart. You can't yeah, just go it. with him any kind of way. Is that where we receive our blessings and our benefits? Absolutely. In the Amplified, it puts it this way. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. It says, I sought, inquired of the Lord, and required him of necessity, and on the authority of his word, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Hey, man. That breaks it down. Yes, even more. yes, 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 yes. He heard my fear. Because one can see how fear in God should be encouraging. However, the second type of fear mentioned in the Bible is not beneficial at all. No. This is the spirit of fear. And so that's, that's is that where you were sharing with us that, that positive and that negative? Yes. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Good. I, I know you got something else on that. <laughs> because when you have that negative fear, you can't never see yourself successful. You always see yourself, like I said earlier, defeated. You know, and anything that follows in that type of mindset is gloom, doom, and destruction. Gloom, gloom, doom, and destruction. Because the enemy, he works for your demise. I say this a lot because he, he don't want you to be successful in anything for the Lord anyway. So if I can distort your vision, I can stop you from seeing what God sees clearly. I can cloud your ear gates with a bunch of garbage and a bunch of mess. So all you feed on is negativity. It gets in your spirit. And when it gets in your spirit, your heart follows suit. So, because Jesus put it this way, he said, it's not what goes to a man that defiles him, but what comes out of that man that defiles him. So if I allow a bunch of negative stuff that creates fear to turn from the Lord, it gets into my spirit. Yes. And Jesus said, that's what's going to come out of me. Yes, 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 yes. So I love that, Pastor. I love that. <laughs> no, I love that when you say it, it's not... It's what's in me. Yes. Because we know the Holy Spirit of the Lord lives in us. Absolutely. But it be it is us. It is us that are not open up the door to let yes. the enemy come in. Because yes. you and I know that 
in darkness. Only reason Christ moves around because he loves the light. Absolutely. Darkness and light. That's all. Oh, okay. Now that makes sense. It you don't know what you <laughs> that, that gotta give it to you. Your head is working this morning. Now Amen. I get the positive and the negative. Yeah. The, the positive, I get it now. So yeah. uh it takes me back to uh the three Hebrew boys. Absolutely. You know I was thinking about that too. Come on, what do you got to say about it? You know, it? the thing like like one thing about that. When you know when they talked about in the devotional about the fire going through the fire, you know uh, temptations and different situations in life, mm -hmm. they did not fear the fire. When they were threatened by the king, if you don't bow to this idol god that I created, then I'm going to throw you into a midst of a fiery, burning fiery furnace. Okay, stop right there. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Commercial break. Time out. <laughs> no, you said something that was powerful. Is that the day did not fear the fire the fire right but they knew that they were not gonna let the idol of man separate them from Christ absolutely that's why key I said, point you know you know when right you there. said that that really touched my spirit it's like the enemy wanted them to focus on his God that's his it. idol that's it but they knew better Yep. Go ahead. Because they knew their God. And the problem comes in. I was like I said, I was teaching last night in the Bible class and I was talking about the spirit of fear. And one thing God revealed to me is that a lot of times we allow the enemy to paralyze us by fear because we turn our focus from the Lord onto the things that seem to be more grandizing in our lives. Grandizing. Yeah. That's you know, right. bigger. Okay. You know, okay. something that's really bo boastful. Yes. And yes. that's what the enemy yes. does. He makes the things that's not of God become bigger than your God in your life. So your problems, the more you focus on it, the bigger it becomes. My mother used to say this to me all the time, stop making, taking a mole here and turn it to a mountain. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, because yeah. we do that. We take something that's so minute and we dwell on it and we keep murmuring and complaining about the same old thing when we need to be praying about that thing and casting that thing off. But instead, we gravitate to it, we hold on to it, we keep feeding it, we keep building it up, we keep nurturing it, I had a pastor one time said, quit nursing, cursing, rehearsing your problem. Mm, so that <laughs> So we nurse it, we curse, curse it, and rehearse, and rehearse it. it. So it's the same thing over and over. So in other words, uh, sometimes when we're afraid, we allow that spirit of the fear to overcome us. Yes. And to overcome us, it need, we need to trust in the Lord, our God, completely. That's it. So... This fear, this fear, this fear, Pastor. And I love the title. Why are you allowing the enemy, the enemy, yeah. to hinder you with fear? That's it. We yeah. don't need to. We need to. We need to focus more on Christ. We do. We really do. You know, because uh, uh, look, look what it says in Psalms 34 and 7. It says, what? The angels of the Lord encamp all around those who, what? Fear him. That's it. And do, and he would and deliver them. He delivered. You know, and oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no wants to those who fear him. Now, let's go up here, Pastor, where it says that the, the angels of the Lord encamp around us. Yes. What do your Bible say? Um, it says in the, in the Amplified, it says the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, who revere and worship him with awe, and each of them he delivers. Mm. That's interesting. That's very interesting there. So we need to know who we are fearing. Absolutely. And you know what? Let, let, I'm going to put this little nigga in there. And the fear it's talking about is not being afraid of God. Okay, thank it's, you, thank it's you. It's talking you. about having a respect and a reverence for God. So sure. if I put God first and I, I, I honor and respect and love God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength. So God says, because I come to him, he says, in awe, I worship him. So in the midst of my troubles, when any try to create the opposite, the negative fear, I can cast that thing off because I'm trusting and depending on my God to what? Deliver me. Amen. Amen, Pastor. So we daily, yes. daily, daily, we should 
should keep continually, daily, yes. giving the Lord praise. You know, I want to read something in. Do you have a, a January 28th or more you got? Let me go back to Yes, it. yes. You know, uh, I saw something that is very powerful over there uh, in January the 28th. If, if you don't have it, I got it. I got, got it. Okay, go ahead. I want, to, I want you to read something because that's some key points I want to share with our listeners. First, go ahead. Which part? Uh, started, God, are you in my ear? Okay. God, are you in my ear? Can you hear me? Thus says the Lord, Lord, today I hear the sound of abundance of rain. You're calling me to do your work. I'm listening closely to get the intricate details for my assignment. Father, rain down on me with the holy fire. Fill me up, Lord, so I will overflow with the love you have imparted in me. Jesus, you say you will make room for my gift. Lord, open my eyes so I can see the gifts which you have bestowed upon me. Lord, let me uh, let me work on perfecting what you have given me for the use of your kingdom. Father, I am working for the kingdom, and there is no more I would rather do than work for you. Telling this dying world of a living Savior, Lord, I will go in boldness without fear, and I will do what you have called me to do. I love you, Lord. Now, Lord, empower, empower me with more of God. Amen, amen. You know, I love it because uh, uh, our time is, is, is winding down, but I want to get this point in. Look what it says, uh, Pastor, in Psalms uh, uh, 37 and 17. It says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and deliver them out of all their troubles. Yeah. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and say such have a contrite spirit. Many are afflicted of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all. Oh, okay, I'll just stop right there. Okay. But he delivered them out yeah. of them all. Uh, 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 help us out before we get up out of here. Okay, the righteous cry, and that's, that's you, a born-again believer, and the Lord hears and delivers them. So in other words, you've got to be in right standing and right relationship to call upon the Lord. So once you call upon the Lord, the Lord promises he will deliver you out of all your troubles. And then he says the Lord is nigh. That means he's near you. He's not far away from you. He's right there with you when you begin to cry out to him because you have a broken heart. And he's saving such and have a contrite spirit. That means humility. When you come to God humble, God says, I'm there with you. I'm right there for you, and I will deliver you. Then he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. So it doesn't matter what your affliction is or circumstance is. God promises he will deliver you out of all things. All right. Well, Pastor, you know, it's getting that time. We're going to have to get on out of here. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, our dear sister, Jackie Dawson, for allowing her this month. Use it more of you, God, and anybody that wants to... Uh, receive this book, you can go to GodDivineJourney.com uh, and you can go to, um, what is that? Barnes and Noble. Okay. And eBay, Amazon. Amazon and eBay. Right. Give us a quick word, Pastor, before we get out of here right quick. Okay, so I want to encourage you, those who are listening today, that if you're bound by fear, allow the Holy Spirit to break that spirit off of you, that you be walk, walk into freedom and the liberty of Christ is provided through our redemption. And then, Father, we thank you today for this message going across the airways. We pray it do not return to you, Father, boy, but it will accomplish what you please, prosper where you sent it, and bring deliverance to the lives of those who hear this word and set them free inwardly and work on the outside. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Last week is good. Last week is good. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you.